good morning to all uh, and welcome you all in this ai 102 session uh, guys please note we have kept uh, 10 minutes spare time so that other participants can join so basically we'll start in 10 minutes till then please be patient with us thank you
Uh, participants are requested to note that we'll start the webinar in few minutes as we are expecting more participants to join. I repeat, we'll start in few minutes as we are expecting more participants to join. Till the time you all can go and check our website. Link has been shared in the chat box. Also, I have shared the platform links like social media platform links has been shared in the chat box. If you want to connect with us, you can go and follow the social media platform as well. Also, I have shared the learning achievement batch. So this is the complimentary learning achievement batch for AI 102 certification. You have to follow the steps mentioned in the chat box and get your batch activated. Once you get the batch activated, you can share this batch on your LinkedIn and Twitter profile. Guys, I have shared the steps for the badge to be redeemed in the chat box. You can see in, uh, on the screen, I have shared the screen as well. So you have to follow certain steps to get your badge activated. First, you have to go on Microsoft. As you can see here, you have to click on this link. You will get this page. If you don't have any account in Microsoft Learn, you have to create uh, your profile first. And if you have the profile, you can simply go on the URL, which has been mentioned to get your batch activated. As, you, as soon as you click on the redeem button, your batch will get activated. And under module courses and more, you will get your batch. Yeah, you can see the completed time will be mentioned and date will be mentioned. So your batch will get batch will reflected here. Also, if you face any problem related to the batch redemption, please do put your queries in the chat box so I can help you with that.
Okay, so we'll start with the webinar now. So welcome you all in this AI 102 webinar. So talking about today's event sponsor, Synergetics. So Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company. Uh, we not only provide the certification training, but, but we do provide group training as well. Uh, here you can see the solutions which Synergetics offers. We have onboarding solution. Then we have reskilling solution. Then we have certification solution. Certification plus add-on solution. Cloud adoption solution. Architecting solution. Practice playbook solution. Latest technology training solution and emerging technology training solution. So today's webinar is organized and handled by ATC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. So ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in cloud technologies. You just need to follow our meetup groups, which are an emerging technology community for all. Then we have Pune community for Pune Kurs. Emerging technology community Sura. Then we have Azure tech community Nagpur. You just need to install the meetup app on your phone or on your device to follow these communities. I will share the link in the chat box for you all. Then we have code of conduct, which you all need to follow. Please note, no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording. We'll share the recording on our official YouTube channel for this webinar. So you can go and get your access over there. For that, you have to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I will share the YouTube channel link in the chat box for you all. The speaker for this webinar is Mr. Sonu Satyadas. He is an MCT Microsoft certified trainer and currently work with Synergetics as practicer. He has years of experience in delivering the certification training. Moving ahead, agenda for this webinar. So participants will get an overview for the certification AI 102 certification and we'll try to clear doubts related to the concepts on AI. As I said earlier, we are providing complementary learning achievement batch for AI 102. So you have to follow the steps and I have shared the URL with the steps. So you have to get your AI 102 learning achievement batch activated. Once you get the batch activated, you can share that batch on your LinkedIn and Twitter profile. In this batch, you will get a study material related to AI 102 certification. So make sure you follow the steps and get your learning achievement batch redeemed. Then as you all know, there is AI month going on in which we have open webinars for AI technology. So if anyone of you wants to join more uh, AI related uh, webinars, I will share the link for that. You can go and register for the same. Then make sure you follow the social media platforms as well. Links will be shared in the chat box for you all. Also, we'll share a feedback form by the end of the webinar. So do submit the feedback form. That's all. Thanks to all. Over to you, uh, Sonu, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chaitali. Hello, everyone. I hope I am audible to all of you. So let me share my screen.
I hope the screen is visible to all of you. Yes. Sir. Myself, uh, Sonu Satidas. I am working as a practice head for the open source and Doppler technologies. I'm a training consultant, uh, Microsoft certified trainer, uh, delivering certification sessions on Microsoft Azure architecting, Azure developer, then Azure administrator, and Azure AI engineering. So I'm in this industry from last uh, 14 plus years, handled uh, lots of batches for Microsoft and known Microsoft clients on various technologies. Today, as part of this uh, campaign, we are conducting the session on uh, AI 102, the AI engineering certification on Azure. As part of this, we are trying to cover these uh, points. So we'll be talking about primarily the Azure AI services. So we'll talk about the fundamental AI concepts, AI services on the Azure platform, then AI applications uh, with the cognitive services. We'll understand what is cognitive services, and we'll go through some of the cognitive services such as vision services, language services and speech services. Also, we'll talk about the bot development and finally ending with the Azure search. So this AI 102 certification primarily contains 12 modules and we are trying to cover all the concepts of that 12 modules in just uh, three to four hours. So you can understand uh, that we have to limit ourselves on some areas. So let's uh, start with the introduction. So artificial intelligence is one of the most commonly used technique most commonly discussed topic nowadays. So most of the applications, devices, solutions, everything is using the artificial intelligence. If you see the driverless cars or the automated uh, applications, even in our uh, simple e-commerce applications also, using this artificial intelligence to give suggestions on products. So if you go to uh, Amazon or maybe uh, Flipkart kind of uh, shopping website, they are providing some suggestions based on the previous purchases or based on the other customers purchase history. So they are providing some suggestions. They are uh, 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 giving the best product to you, right? So all this because of artificial intelligence, whether they are using in a, a small scale or large scale, you all are using the artificial intelligence in your day-to-day -day life. Even if you are using the mobile cam, if whenever you take a selfie, it is able to detect the face uh, when you take the photo and you can easily tag that uh, faces. So that is a part of artificial intelligence only. It's, it is able to detect the position of a face in that photo and you can easily tag that faces. So when you talk about artificial intelligence, it's used everywhere nowadays. And it provides human-like capabilities to the applications for analyzing the uh, images or videos or for processing the text or audio 
or for taking the decisions. So sometimes we need to understand the insights about image or video, or we have to moderate the images and videos, or sometimes we have to uh, generate captions for audios, or we need to convert the text input into audio or we we need to convert the traditional paper based application forms into digital formats okay by extracting the informations from the paper forms or paper based application forms we need to read that informations and convert into database data we for all these purposes we can use artificial intelligence the base of artificial intelligence is data science and machine learning so data science is simply the analysis of data with some statistical techniques so you have a large set of data maybe billions of trillions of uh, information about particular uh, entity, maybe uh, about the images, about the purchase orders, about the uh, objects, anything. So you may have uh, information at large scale and using some mathematical and statistical techniques, you are going to analyze this to find the similarities or patterns within that data. So that approach we call as data science. And using this data which we have analyzed, we can make predictions. OK, this will happen in the future. Because I have analyzed the past five years data. So according to that analysis, I can come to a conclusion that this will happen in the next year. So this is the prediction, right? So it happens because of the machine learning. So for that, we use data as well as algorithms. When we talk about data science, it is just to analyze the past data and give you the summary of that information. OK, this is what happened in the previous years. But if you add some algorithms, into that and then predicting something. OK, this will happen in the future. Because I have analyzed this previous year's information from that I have identified that this may happen in the future. So this is called a machine learning. So based on this machine learning, we can build applications and services which we call as AI services or AI based applications. So when we apply the algorithms on the data and then making some predictions, we call it as machine learning. And the machine learning generates some machine learning models. A model is a set of data with algorithms that can predict something means whenever I provide some input, it can give some suggestions or predictions that uh, object is called model. So that is the machine learning model. So using this models, we can build applications, the intelligent applications. It may be a simple website or it may be a chatbot or it may be some uh, graphic based applications anything right so these machine learning models are developed by organizations and made available to customers yes if you are a machine learning uh, developer or machine learning engineer you can go and create your own machine learning model by training the data using some algorithms and then test this and publish. 
so you can create your own machine learning models or you can use the machine learning models which are created or published by some organizations like a microsoft google or some other organizations now recently we we are talking about the open ai right so they are also providing a set of machine learning models which we can use in our applications so organizations are providing ai models which we can integrate with within our applications to make that application intelligent but whenever we build an artificial intelligence application we have to follow some principles so we cannot go and create the applications whatever we like we have to follow some principles these principles we call as responsible ai or we have to follow some instructions or some rules we can call them as a responsible ai so what is this responsible ai principles the first one is the fairness which means if you are building a machine learning model it should not show bias on the data what you are providing for example if a person is going to apply for some admission or some uh, loan or something like that it should not give any uh, discrimination based on the color caste gender or something like that it should treat everyone in the same way whether it is a black person or a white person or it's a rich person or a poor person or a male or a female whatever it is so it should analyze the given information and then approve or not approve it it, it should give a prediction okay yes we can approve the loan to this person because his uh, uh, analyzing his uh, income certificate and the expenditure details we can provide a loan to this person so we it should it should not say that okay he this is a uh, female so we should not provide loans or this is a person uh, who is uh, poor or this is a person who is uh, black so you should not give a uh, loan to this so it should not give any kind of or it should not show any kind of discriminations on people to predict the results so that is fairness so it means bias can affect the results which it provides and it should not happen next is the reliability and safety so now nowadays uh, you can see driverless cars are very popular and it's now implemented uh, in countries everywhere but what happens if the system failures if the ai model failed to detect an object which is coming in the opposite direction what happens so it will affect the uh, safety of the passenger right so there will be a collision and it will affect the safety of that person or the passenger so you have to make sure the ai application should not harm anyone or it should not harm any person it should be properly tested and it should give proper result when we talk about the privacy and security one of the important point is that the data that is also sensitive data about the people should not be exposed for example the medical informations which is very sensitive nowadays because the research organizations are collecting 
uh, informations and then creating medicines or they are collecting the health informations about people and then creating the medicines and viruses uh, in the labs so so how these research organizations use this uh, informations we cannot predict so sometimes they use it for good purpose sometimes they use it for bad so the sensitive informations like uh, medical reports or medical details financial informations security informations identity informations this thing should not be exposed right so the application the ai applications should make sure that these informations are not exposed the next principle is inclusiveness so inclusiveness means when you build an application the ai based application it should consider everyone who is going to use that application the application should consider everyone for example if you are building an application that is only uh, used by people who has vision but what if a person who is blind is trying to use that application if they are not able to use that application or a service then we cannot say that it follows this inclusiveness principle suppose if the application is not able to provide or if, if, the, if the person who is blind is not able to use that application it should provide some audio instructions so that he can also follow the instructions so if you are giving the instructions how to use the application or a service only in the uh, written text somewhere uh, printed then it will be applicable only to the people who have vision so for considering the blind people who don't have uh, vision so you have to provide audio instructions as well right so that what we can include everyone in the solution next is transparency when you build the ai tools or ai applications it should give the information that how or on what basis it is taking decisions yes for example if we are uh, using the application like a policy bazaar or maybe uh, some uh, mutual fund applications we are using so the application is telling okay you invest on this so you will get good return but the system should tell on what basis they are giving this suggestion so they have to tell yes from the past 5 years or 10 years data we have analyzed according to that this company is going to make profit so you can invest on this so it should be transparent it should tell on what basis it is taking decisions and accountability means if something goes wrong who is accountable because because of this ai applications some innocent people can also be uh, affected for example there is a face detection system and we are providing some blur image of a criminal which, which may be captured from uh, the cc cameras or some other places so we got a blur blurred image and this blurred image we are using to detect the actual person so suppose when you uh, uh, compare this blur image with the other people's uh, faces maybe people are coming into the shopping mall so while entering the mall there is a camera which capture the face of 
the person who is entering the mall and immediately to compare with that blur image to detect whether this, this is a terrorist or criminal. But what if the system goes wrong? What if the system is predicting a wrong result? Then that innocent person will be affected, right? So he, it will badly affect him. It should not happen. So who will be liable for this? The develop obviously the developer of the AI solution because he must have not trained the model with the proper data. So these are some of the uh, responsible AI principles you have to follow while building the AI solutions. Now we talk about the AI services that is available on Azure platform because Azure is a cloud service provider or Microsoft Azure is a public cloud which offers hundreds of uh, uh, cloud services, including the AI solutions. As I have mentioned earlier, organizations like Microsoft also created some machine learning models and published these machine learning models on the cloud platform. So as an end user, you can just go and consume this uh, AI models. So you just need to pay for what you are using, right? So let us understand what are the different uh, AI solutions available on the Azure platform. First of all, the machine learning. So there is a machine learning studio or machine learning service available that helps a developer to create his own machine learning model. As I have mentioned that Microsoft is providing some pre-trained machine learning models. But if the user is not satisfied with that and he wants to build his own machine learning model, which means he need a powerful compute for training the model, for testing the model. So the machine learning studio or machine learning service provides powerful uh, infrastructure for uh, uh, training the models. It provides some set of algorithms which you can apply on your data. You can design the machine learning algorithms. You can train and test these models and then publish this model or deploy this model so that the end users can consume this as a rest endpoint. So this machine learning studio provides uh, solutions for building your own machine learning models, which helps you to train the model, test the model and publish the model. The entire infrastructure will be provided by Azure. The Azure Cognitive Services is another set of uh, services provided by Microsoft Azure. As I have mentioned, Microsoft is providing a set of pre-trained machine learning models. These pre-trained machine learning models we call as cognitive services. So they are categorized into language services, speech services, vision services, decision services, and also applied AI services. If you see, the language services contains text anal analysis, question answering, language understanding, and translation. The speech services includes speech recognition, speech synthesis, speech translation, and speaker 
recognition. The vision services includes image analysis, video analysis, image classification, object detection, facial analysis, and optical character recognition. The decision APIs includes anomaly detection, content moderation, and content personalization. And there are some applied AI services like a form recognizer, metrics advisor, video analyzer, immersive reader, bot services, and cognitive search because they are AI based solutions or AI based services that you can use. So if you see this cognitive services are pre trained machine learning models. So Microsoft already trained these models with a millions of data and some of these models you can train with your own custom data also like a base API or custom vision or question and answering model. So all these can be used to uh, create your own model it means these models are already ready, but you can train this model with your own custom data and enhance the model performance. Another AI service which is available on the Azure platform is the bot service. Chatbots are very popular in nowadays applications. Whenever you visit a website, you will see a pop up coming to the application and asking you, how can I help you? So you may be thinking that a person or a uh, support assistant is asking you how to help. So you can communicate with him, with that uh, person using text, audio or images. And this virtual assistant is able to provide suggestions, solutions and answers for your questions. So you will be uh, communicating with a virtual assistant, not a human being. So behind the scene, a AI based virtual assistant is working, which we call as the chatbot. So chatbots can be integrated with different uh, applications and services, it means you can integrate into web applications, you can integrate into Teams, you can integrate into Slack, you can integrate into uh, Facebook everywhere. So you can wherever you want, you can integrate this bots. The cognitive search is a data mining solution or a knowledge mining solution, which is AI powered. So it use the AI capabilities to find the results from the data source. Suppose if you have a data source, it can be the data source can be your relational database. It can be your no SQL database like a Cosmos DB. It can be your uh, a blob storage, which contains some unstructured uh, data. Or it could be some big data solutions anywhere. So there will be some uh, data sources. It may be structured, semi-structured or unstructured. And this cognitive search can go and index those informations and then extract informations from that. So it uses an indexing mechanism. It extract the key phrases, entities and uh, other details and create an index out of that so that whenever you make a query maybe you are searching for a particular word or you are searching for a particular file or you are searching for a particular entity so whenever you search for a particular data the cognitive search is going to analyze the entire data source and provide 
the matching results. So this helps you to easily uh, uh, find out the results from a large data source. So you can index this data source, means the indexing ha can happen once or a recurring mode, means you can do it only one time indexing or you can do it in periodically, maybe every one hour or every uh, one day you have to re-index this data. So this cognitive search helps you to detect the information from databases like uh, NoSQL and relational databases, unstructured blobs and the big data solutions. So these are some of the AI services available on the Azure platform. So, so far we have discussed that Microsoft Azure is providing the AI solutions such as machine learning, machine learning service, which provides a machine learning studio so that the ML developer can create their own machine learning models uh, by using the infrastructure of Azure. Second, we have discussed the cognitive services, which are pre-trained machine learning models so that as an end user or end application developer, you can directly consume this pre-trained models in their application. So they need to pay only for what they are using. Suppose if they are using a vision service, they need to pay the nominal charges uh, for that service. Then we have board framework or board service that helps you to create chatbots uh, which can be integrated into your applications and services. It is a powerful virtual assistant that can use the cognitive services to enhance its features. And finally, we have discussed about the cognitive service, which is a uh, AI based uh, uh, knowledge mining solution, which can uh, get the data or which can mine the data from various data sources like relational, uh, no SQL, big data solutions, as well as the unstructured data sources. Now we are going to talk about some of the cognitive services because this is, a, this is going to be an interesting point or interesting topic because these pre-trained machine learning models, we can directly integrate in your application. So if you are an application developer, but you don't have any skill on the AI services, no worries, still you can go and make an AI enabled application by integrating this cognitive services into your application. It's very, very easy for you to integrate these cognitive services. If you want to integrate cognitive services in your application, first of all, you have to go and create a cognitive service resource or a particular type of cognitive service resource in the Azure subscription. So you must have a valid Azure subscription first and inside the Azure subscription, you have to create a multi-service resource or a single service resource. Multi-service resource means you can create a single cognitive service, which can be used for different cognitive service models. For example, for speech services, for vision services, for form recognizer, and for uh, uh, language services, for everything, you will be able to use a single cognitive services. So it will be doing a combined billing for these services because whenever you use a vision service like a computer vision or a custom vision or a face API, or you are using a speech service like a speech to text, text to speech, or uh, 
speech translation, speaker recognition. So any of the speaker speech service or a language service like uh, text analytics, language understanding, Q&A maker. So any of this service you use, the, you will be charged using a single resource that is a multi service resource because one single resource is uh, calculating the usage of all uh, cognitive services. But if you don't want this approach means you don't need a combined building and you want to know for each service how it is charging for example for uh, uh, computer vision you want to know the bill amounts separately for custom vision you want to know the bill amount separately for uh, text to speech you want to know the bill amount separately language understanding service what is the bill amount so if you want to know the bill amounts for individual resources, then you can go and create a single service resource, which means if you are interested, you can create individual resources for each service type. So this is a little difficult to manage, but easy to use and understand because it will help you to understand the usage of each API. Suppose we can easily identify which service is most consumed. Okay, because every resource has individual billing point. But in the multi service resource, it uh, does not provide uh, uh, individual billing, it uh, calculates the aggregated billing only which means whether you are using language service or a vision service or a speech service or some decision making service, your bill comes in a total. So you cannot identify the individual resource utilization. And another one or another difference you can see is in multi service resource, it provides only a standard pricing tier, which means there is no free service tier available, but if you go with the single service resource model, you can uh, create even free tiers, which means you don't need to pay for uh, using this cognitive services for a certain amount. For example, there are limitations for the free tier, like uh, maybe in one hour you will be able to use a limited number of requests maybe in one hour maybe 100 requests you can make i'm not sure about the exact number or uh, in one day you are allowed to use maximum 1000 request right so that means free tier is available in single service model means i can create a free tier for language service i can create a free tier for uh, uh, q and maker or language service that means every individual service i can create single uh, service resource but multiple service model does not provide this free option it provides only the uh, consolidated option means it, that means the standard pricing tier only provided because it is uh, used by different cognitive services so free tier option is not available. Now, if you see the services, I have already mentioned some of these cognitive services allow you to train the model with your own data. Like a Louis, QA Maker, Custom Vision, Face API, etc. So, some of these API types or some of these cognitive services allow you to create two different resource uh, types that is, one for training and one for prediction. So, 
while training the model you need to go and create some resources and for prediction you need to create another resource this is applicable for uh, some cognitive service apis or models which provides the option for training and prediction okay so let us go to the portal and understand how to create this cognitive service resources so it's very easy to create we need to log in to the azure portal and when we create a resource you can either search for the multi service resource model that is cognitive service so when you search for cognitive services it provides an option here you can see this is providing the multi service uh, resource option so cognitive service is a product bundle that enables customers to uh, use multiple services with a single api key so that means using a single api key you will be able to access multiple services because api key is uh, used for authentication purpose because every time when you make a request to the uh, cognitive service it will validate whether the request is coming from an authenticated user uh, by uh, verifying this api key so an api key is very important so there are two api keys key 1 and key 2 so you can rotate the keys periodically it's a best practice but the same key can be used for all services whether it is vision language search speech or any service you can use a single key so while creating this you will see it will be asking for a valid subscription it is asking for a resource group and then a region where you want to create and then a name for this resource and below the pricing tier if you see there is only standard pricing tier available there is no free option so by checking this you acknowledge that you have accepted or and you have understood and accepting all the terms and conditions that is a responsible ai notice is given so that means you will use this cognitive services for creating a responsible ai applications and then some of the other features like a network and identity means managed identities for this cognitive services so i am not creating this resource because i have already created a resource so if you are looking for specific resource types for example computer vision computer vision is an is a cognitive service which is used for image analysis right so if you want to create a vision service you can go and create a computer vision or you can go and create custom vision also for example here custom vision or you can uh, use space api here you can see this is the face service or you can also use the uh language service right so you can see you are able to go and create individual resources for each service type or you can create a multi uh, service resource which is cognitive service So when we create a service, whether it is 
multi service resource or a single service resource it provides uh, an endpoint and a key so while making request to that machine learning model because these are pre trained machine learning models while making request to these models you have to use an endpoint and a key endpoint is used to specify where the service is uh, deployed or where the uh, or what is the endpoint or what is the address for uh, consuming this service key is used for authentication and you need to specify a location that means basically while creating the service you will be specifying the location of the service it can be deployed in india or it can be deployed in us or it can be deployed in uh, europe or anywhere wherever you want you can deploy it so sometimes some services when you consume you don't need to explicitly pass the location so from the url it will identify the location of your cognitive service okay but in some services you need to specify the location as well okay so for consuming the apis cognitive service apis you have to use endpoint keys and the optionally a location because for every service location parameter is not mandatory and all these cognitive services can be consumed using rest apis means the http urls or you can use the sdks means client sdk every language uh, provides or every language is having this sdk for cognitive services for means you can use the cognitive services in c sharp java node js python and so on right that means you don't need to make request to the http url you can call some functions so whenever you go for ai 102 certification we will be using the c sharp as the language for all the demos so if you are uh, attending the ai 102 certification then you have to have a basic understanding of c sharp because uh, as part of the certification the language c sharp is used for all the demos so but it is possible that you can consume the ai services from any language but for the certification point of view c sharp language is used this is what you can see whenever you build the applications using uh, .NET, python node js or java you will be calling the functions and these functions makes an http request to the apis that is it makes a rest api request and this returns the result in the form of json and that json result is again serialized or sorry deserialized into class objects so that means when you make a request it is automatically making an http request to the backend api using rest endpoints and when the response comes it is the response will be in the json format and that will be deserialized into class objects format using the sdk so as a developer as an application developer it will be easy for you to work with the sdks while using this uh, cognitive services security is an important point so for that there are two recommendations they provide one is you have to regenerate the keys periodically means i said there are two keys available as i can show you if i go to this cognitive service so this is the multi service account as you can see it provides keys and endpoint as you can see there are two 
keys key one and key two then location and the endpoint so it is uh, recommended to use both the keys that means periodically you have to regenerate the keys means rotate the keys to avoid the interruption what you have to do you have to provide an option to switch to the key two okay when the key is regenerated when the key one is regenerated it, it should provide an option to switch to the key two and when the key two is regenerated it, it should provide the option to switch to key one so that means your service or your application will not get affected okay so even the key is regenerated okay so the keys should be regenerated periodically and you have to provide option for using uh, the secondary key uh, when the first primary key is regenerated and the vice versa means when the secondary is regenerated you have to use a primary key okay second security consideration is uh, you can store this keys into key vault key vault is a microsoft azure service for storing your secrets on azure cloud so if you want to store your authentication keys and secrets uh, securely on the azure then you can put them in the key vault and anything which is stored in the key vault is only accessible to applications with a managed identity or a service principle and the user don't have direct access to the key vault and very interesting thing is uh, nowadays most of these applications most of the client applications are running in the form of docker containers which means if you are creating a microservices application or a cloud and native application, you will be deploying these uh, applications in the form of Docker containers with the help of a Kubernetes cluster or some other container cluster. Or you may be running them on a container host, which may, it may be uh, Azure App Service or maybe Azure Container App or it may be container instance service or something else so some con kind of container host is used to run the containerized applications so to consume the cognitive services you don't need to go and connect to the cloud endpoints you can connect to the uh, containerized cognitive services also that means your uh, cognitive services are also available in the containerized format means along with the cloud based uh, uh, endpoints it is also possible to containerize the cognitive services and deploy within your cloud uh, sorry uh, container environment for example if your applications are running from Kubernetes cluster, it is possible for you to deploy these cognitive service containers within the same cluster. Then how the billing is happening? So whenever you make a call to the containerized cognitive service, it will send the metrics and billing informations to the cloud. Okay, so that means as an application, you are co connecting to the local container based uh, service, but that service is sending the metrics as well as the billing information to the cloud. So, this uh, the benefit of using the containerized uh, uh, cognitive service is you will get more control over the data because some organizations will have some restrictions okay the data that they are using should not go 
out of their cluster or out of their environment. So in such cases, they can use this containerized cognitive services so that your uh, cognitive API request will be processed within the cluster or within the environment, but the billing information is only going to the cloud, right? So that means your data is not going to be uh, sent to the cloud environment. So containerized uh, cognitive services also an option for using the AI services on Azure platform. So, so far we have discussed the cognitive services, how we can consume this cognitive services, how we can create the cognitive service resources on the Azure portal. And then finally we have discussed what is the benefit of using containerized cognitive services, right? Now coming to the next section, which is talking about the cognitive services we have, like the vision services, language services, and speech services, following followed by the bot and the cognitive search. In this section, we are talking about the vision services. Vision services is one of the category of cognitive services. We have discussed in the beginning, there are different types of cognitive services, such as vision, uh, speech, language, decision making, and applied AI services. One of the category of cognitive services are uh, vision services. And this vision services includes different uh, types of uh, vision APIs. And one of the vision API or vision service is computer vision. This computer vision is a pre-trained machine learning model which is used to analyze the images. So the primary usage of computer vision is image analysis, but it can be used for some other purposes also. It can be used for creating the uh, thumbnail of your image. It can be used for uh, getting some uh, objects objects information from the images you can also uh, use this computer vision to read the text informations it could be handwritten text or maybe uh, printed text so there are different uh, features available in computer vision so if you say image analysis it uh, provides the features like a description and the tag generation, which means when you provide an image, it will give you a description about that image. It's an AI generated description. And it can also generate some tags, means for example, if you are giving the picture of a dog playing in the uh, beach, so it will be it will be giving some tags like a beach, outdoor, dog, uh, pet, animal, something like that. So these are some of the tags that we can find out. And it will give you a description, something like a, a, a dog is playing on the beach. So that is a description about that image. Object detection. It is possible to detect the objects uh, within that image. So computer vision is a uh, computer vision model is already trained with uh, millions of images and uh, objects images so that 
in whenever you supply an image it will be able to detect different uh, images or different uh, objects within that image for example if there is a television and a laptop and there is a table so uh, in the picture whenever you upload this picture it will be able to detect the position of television it will tell you okay in this area i found a television in this area i found a table in this uh, area i found a tea cup okay so that means it will be able to identify the objects in that image and the, and it, it can tell in which position these objects are detected you can also use it for face detection but understand this is not a full featured face detection which we will discuss later what is the actual face api does but this is used to detect the face position okay so that it will tell you the face and its a position so where the face is detected so that can be identified in the computer vision's face detection and it will give you the image metadata information like the uh, color type the most commonly used color pattern and so on and it can also provide the information about uh, category of image whether this is an image of a celebrity or it's a landmark or something else brand detection so if you are giving an image of a t-shirt or maybe a pen or maybe some other object it will be able to detect the brands from the logos printed on that uh, object maybe if, if, if you have a a uh, t-shirt in the t-shirt there is a uh, brand name so the ai model is capable to uh, detect which brand it is okay moderation ratings are possible which means if the image contains uh, adult or racy contents means uh, if there is a violence blood and other things then it will be able to tell you okay this image is not not suitable okay so it can moderate the content optical character recognition is another feature which can be used to read the handwritten or printed text from the images and also it can be used to generate the thumb nails from the large images because you may be using a thumbnail within your application so somewhere uh, you want to generate an image gallery so the image gallery thumbnail you have to generate so you can use the image analysis or computer vision service to generate thumbnail uh, of the given image as we have discussed computer vision can be used as a standalone service or as a multi service cognitive service okay so that means while using the computer vision you will be able to uh, specify whether you have to use a standalone computer vision service or a multi service resource so this is an example of generating thumbnails as you can see we are providing an image okay so this is the picture of white house so which is the main main area or major part of this image it will detect that position and then create the thumbnail so instead of cropping that image uh, from any position it is capable to detect the main area of this uh, picture and then create a thumbnail out of it okay so you can also specify the width and height while uh, doing the cropping okay while generating the thumbnail so the end point you supply you will specify that you want to generate a thumbnail and you can specify the width and height and some of the other features smart cropping 
is required or not. Like uh, just to convert the image into smaller size, or you want to detect the the main main area of the image and generate a thumbnail out of that. Video analyzer for media. So video analysis is again a part of uh, vision service. So it provides the features like a facial recognition, optical character recognition, speech transcription, topics, sentiment, labels, content moderation, and scene segmentation. Hence, like in computer vision, we are doing the face detection and inside the face, what is the sentiment going on? Okay, that means whether it is a sad face or a happy face or a neutral. Okay, it is able to find out the labels means within this image, what are the different objects that object labels can be identified and the content of the video can be moderated. Okay, so that means this video analysis is capable to do all these functionalities. But when you do uh, it using a standalone free vision, there are some uh, limitations applied, means you will not be able to do all the operations within uh, with the free standalone version. So it is better to use the uh, multi-service cognitive model. And this is uh, connected to the media services. So the Azure Media Services is a service offered. So video analysis, if you want to do, you can do it with the uh, Azure Media Services. So you can provide some video and it will be able to detect these informations. Custom insights. So predefined models for recognizing the language well-known entities uh, well-known celebrities and brands are possible so usually the com computer vision or the vision service is capable to detect the language if there is a text it can understand the language if there is a person it can detect who is that person if he is a well-known celebrity and if there is a brand logo it can detect the brands but if you want, you can create your own models also. Means, suppose you want to detect the face of a person, but he, he may not be a celebrity, but you want the model to detect such faces. Okay, so whenever you supply an image, it, you want the model to tell, okay, this is the image of Mr. So-and-so, right? So you can train the model or you can create the model by uh, training the API uh, with the facial recognition by providing some sample images. Or you can provide some uh, language specific features because uh, while detecting the text, you can specify some uh, terms and terminologies that we use inside your organizations. And some of the custom brand names, maybe uh, the computer vision is able to detect the brands which are most popular in US. But if in India, there are lots of organizations and these organizations has logos. So the computer vision may not be able to detect this logos. But if you want, you can train the model to detect the logos and brands of Indian uh, companies and Indian brands. And uh, inside this image that is uh, video frames, it can identify the animated characters. For that, you can train the model to detect those uh, objects. Objects in the sense the cartoon characters, the animated characters can be detected. So for all these, you can train the model. So means these are some of the applications that the computer vision you can use to uh, uh, detect even custom brands, custom faces, custom uh, 
characters or custom objects in your uh, image etc but for that you have to train your uh, train the model and create a new model out of that the read api is part of vision service only but it is used to the vision so it is uh, part of the vision api and this read api is used to read the text from the images as well as pdf documents for example uh, previously we used to use the ocr means optical character recognition but this optical character recognition is uh, deprecated now and uh, they are recommending to use the read api read api in the sense it is going to uh, detect the text from the images that you supply uh, from the uh, images or pdf documents it will be able to read the handwritten or printed text so this is more uh, powerful and uh, providing better accuracy than the old OCR API. So OCR API is also doing the similar thing, but uh, compared to this new model, read API, uh, OCR is uh, not that better. So o OCR API is deprecated. So it is recommended to use the new read API. It reads printed text in multiple languages and handwritten text in English. So if you want to read the printed text in different uh, languages, but if there is a handwritten, then it should be in English, then it, it is able to read it. It uses the asynchronous programming model, which means from the SDK, you can make an asynchronous call using the it means in case of dot net you can use a task based function call so it will make and read the informations from the supplied image or document so this is how it is as you can see you can you can make a call to the read function to get the operation ID because it is an asynchronous operation, right? So because it is an asynchronous operation, it uh, does not return the result immediately. So once you make a request for uh, reading, it returns the operation ID. As you can see, this endpoint or this API is making a call to analyze and read the text. So this will return the operation ID. As you can see, we are passing the URL of the image or the image is also uploaded. So you can upload the image or you can pass the URL of the image. Okay. Once you supply the image, it will analyze and needs to return the text. But instead of returning the text, it returns an operation ID because it may take some time to complete the read operation. So what it, what it does, it immediately returns the operation ID. Using that operation ID, you can make another call to get the actual result because it will take some time to uh, complete the read operation. As you can see, you need to make a call to the read function to get an operation ID first, then you make a call to the get read result for getting the final result. So the result will be like this. It says in page one, okay, in which what are the lines? Okay, there is a position and uh, there is a hello world. So the text is hello world and it is in this position. The position is this one. This is the X, Y coordinate position. Similarly, uh, it also returns the words inside that, that there is a hello plus word. So hello and word, these are the two words. And the line is hello word. It is in this particular page. Okay. 
so when you make a request for reading the text from an image it, it returns the operation id and that operation id you have to use to make a next request to get the final results as you can see the final result is coming in the form of json so before moving to the next service let me show you some interesting things about computer vision as you can see this is the vision studio if you want to try something on the computer vision you can use this vision studio as it shows you can see some of the most commonly used uh, functionalities but if you want the optical character recognition functionality means extracting the text from the images or spatial analysis or the face operations or image analysis so image analysis itself you can see there are different uh, things you can do detect common objects extract common tags then uh, detect sensitive content in the image right remove backgrounds from image search photos with uh, with the image retrieval okay, there are a lot of things and you can see some of them are uh, in preview okay so if you want to use any one of this you can simply click on this uh, box suppose i am clicking on this there is an option try it out simply click they have given some images okay if you want you can click any one of this it will give you a caption can you see this is for generating a caption about the Im image i'm selecting this one a group of cows grazing in the field this one a man holding a surfboard on the rock so let's click on this a baseball player holding a bat a statue of woman holding a scale on top of the building so you can see this is what it is right so now you may be thinking that these are some pre-trained uh, images so what if we want to try our own image so you can go and click and specify some sample image maybe i can uh, select this It's a image of city with the tall buildings. Let me take this. A leaning tower of Pisa with uh, leaning uh, with the leaning tower of Pisa in the background. So you can see these are generated captions. A group of people standing on a bridge. Yes, you can see. Suppose let me try with this. The man wearing a hat. A man with a glasses and a beard, right? So that means it's providing the description about that particular image. So it's giving a caption of that particular image and this will give you the documentation the sdk reference and you can also see the rest api usage means if you are planning to use it from rest api how to use this rest apis that you can see here for analyzing this model you have to make a call to this api right Suppose if I want to go back and uh, do something, maybe this is pre trained visual model. Okay, this is the Microsoft provider trained model. So I can go and Select this first. See, 
from this image it is understanding clothing it's a train station metro station there is a train transport metro because these are some tags tags detected right so it is extracting some common tags as you can see suppose this is tells there is it's a there is a person clothing furniture indoor table coffee table there is a human face and so on right and what is there inside the bracket the percentage value is the confidence confidence means how confident it is about that particular prediction so there is a coffee okay there is a coffee mug somewhere and it is predicting that it is 64 percentage i am sure that is a coffee mug you can see this is a coffee cup okay and uh, there is a computer or laptop okay so that is 89 percentage it's a laptop here you can see right so you can upload some image of yours uh, maybe this itself very try so you can see right similarly you can go back and try something else detect faces see it is detecting this the face number two and this is face number two and there is no face mask if you are detecting this it says there is a face mask covering nose and mouth yes you can see right similarly if you want you can try your own photos so this is the main face and this is i don't know why it is okay there is a background there is a person can you see there is a background there is a person's blurred image similarly you can also try with the ocr that is extracted text from images so there are some pre-created text we can select this and it's going to give this right but if you want you can try your own can you see it uh, read this Right, so these are some of the capabilities of uh, computer vision. So I'm not going to all, all of these features one by one because it takes time. So as a developer, application developer, you can make use of these features inside your application. So this is the, this is the vision studio that helps you to try out things. Okay, but if you want to use them, inside your application you have to go to the documentation and see how it can be used for example if you go to the documentation it will give you the example how it can be used inside your application so the documentation is giving that option so you can go to so this is how we use the api so you can make an http call to this but if you are calling from c sharp you can use the library in sdk so can you say this is how we make a request so after computer vision we have another vision service called custom vision so custom vision is uh, an image uh, vision service that is primarily used for two purposes image classification and the object detection image classification means you can 
uh, specifies different uh, classes of images. OK, you can train the model by passing different uh, classes of images. And then uh, once the training is completed and later when you supply the image, it will tell you this image belongs to which class. For example, if you have images of different types of dogs, maybe you have Bulldog, you have Pomeranian, you have uh, a Dalmatian and uh, you have German Shepherd and so on. So you supply different images of each type of dog, maybe 50 German Shepherd, 50 Bulldog, 50 Pomeranian and 50 uh, Dalmatian images you are supplying and you are tagging them and training the model that the first 50 images are uh, German Shepherd, the second 50 images are uh, Bulldog and the third 50 images are Dalmatian and so on. So once the training is completed, Whenever you upload an image of a dog, it clearly tells, OK, this is a Dalmatian or this is a bulldog because from the data which you have supplied during the training period, it identifies the patterns and understand how a bulldog looks like. And whenever you upload an image of a bulldog, it will compare with the patterns that it has identified and it can clearly tell Yes, you have supplied a bulldog image or you have supplied a Dalmatian dog image. OK, so that is what image classification. But object detection is second feature of cu custom vision. Uh, within this image, you will be marking the different uh, objects. For example, I can provide the uh, images of fork, okay, different size of forks or different uh, positions of forks I can supply. And it will train the model. And later, whenever you supply the uh, image, okay, uh, the image may contain fork, spoon, and many other things. But it clearly identifies the position of the fork because it know the, the, the pattern of a fork so that from the supplied image, it will be able to detect the position of that fork because it know how the fork looks like. And from that, it can clearly tell in the provided image where that object exists. So that is a object detection. So for doing this custom vision, you need to train the model, right? First, you are pro providing a set of images and then you are training the model and then you publish and then you consume it. So for training this model, you have to create a training resource. It can be a multi-service resource or a custom service, means a single service for training. And for prediction endpoint, you have to create another resource. There are two resources required. One is a prediction resource and another one is a training resource. Training resource can be multi-service or a single service. Prediction resource can also be multi-service or a single service. So like computer vision, it is not using a single service. It uses two different services, one for prediction and one for training. See here, this is an example when you train the model by supplying the images of apples, by supplying the images of banana, by supplying the images of orange. Later, it can tell you uh, when you supply an image, whether it contains apple, banana or orange, because it uh, knows the pattern of apple, banana and orange. But when it comes to object detection, so you will be providing the size, width, position of uh, your uh, apple, orange, and banana uh, in the trained imager or in the training images. And later when you supply an image, it can clearly tell where this apple is located. So it, will, it can easily tell the position. It will detect the position of apple 
in the given image or it will detect the position of orange in the given image. So that means object detection. So to do this, you have to go for custom vision portal. So custom vision portal is something like a vision studio only, but it is a different website. As you can see, www.customvision.ai is the website. Once you log in to this website, it will ask you to choose a valid subscription. OK, so you have to select an active directory. So you have selected my account. OK, and uh, you have to specify a valid subscription. Now, if you want to create and train the model, you have to first create a project. When you create a custom vision project, you can give a name for that, maybe my demo. I'm just giving the name as my demo. Description, if you want, you can provide a resource. You have to specify a, a resource here. Because if you are uh, doing the training, you have to select a train training resource. For prediction, you have to select a prediction resource. So this is for training. So you have to go and create a new resource in your subscription. So this is my subscription. Inside this subscription, I'm going to create a resource like uh, my custom vision training. Let me check whether this name available. And this is the resource group. And it's a kind of cognitive service, means multi-service model or you can go for a single service model. So I'll just go with custom vision training, which is the independent uh, single service model. And location can be any one of this. So I can go and select this location. Pricing tier can be free or standard. So I'm selecting free and creating this resource. Now you can see the resource is appearing here. That is the training resource. I can select and create the project. Whatever is it created? It's not created. I think these options has not displayed. So let me try this again. My demo. This is training. I'm creating a project of type classification and selecting the general category, general A2, and then create the project. Yes, you can see. Now I'm inside this my demo project and I can add the images. So you have to supply minimum uh, 50 images for be better performance because whenever you provide more input images, the accuracy will uh, improve. But uh, if you provide less images, then the accuracy may not, uh, may not be up to the mark. But yes, I'm going into this and I have some images of Bulldog. I think there are 20 images or something. So that is very less. But yes, we don't have much images. So I'm just uploading all these images and I'm tagging this as Bulldog. OK. And I can also say this is an animal. OK, so this is an animal and this is Bulldog. So I'm uploading all the 20 images of Bulldog. So all these 20 images are marked as Bulldog images. 
now i can upload another category of images suppose i'm selecting all the dalmatian images and then say this is animal only but this is dalmatian upload now i can add a, another set of images which is pomeranian i'm selecting all these and say mark it as animal plus pomeranian see here you can see i have created three categories and all of them come into one tag that is animal also so total 60 images i have now we can go and train the model. So there above we have an option for train. So while doing the training, I'm doing the quick training. OK, so it will take long time. But yes, uh, we have to do the training. So I'm just uh, clicking on the train. It will take some time, maybe 15, 15 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes more than that. It depends. OK, so anyway, so this is the first training. So it is called iteration one. So I'm doing the training. The training will take some time. Once the training is completed, then we can do a quick test. There is an option for testing. By supplying an image, I can check whether it is predicting the correct result or not. I mean, suppose if I'm uploading an image of uh, Dalmatian, whether it is correctly predicting that this is a Dalmatian or not. So that we can test. But for that, the training has to complete first. OK, so that we need to wait. So we'll take a small break of 10, 15 minutes so that by the time the training also will finish, I think so. But before moving to the next API types, let us take a small break of 15 minutes and then we'll continue. So now the time is 11.52. By 12.05, we will continue the session. OK, so let's take a small break. You can go and have a cup of tea. And by 12.05, we will continue the session. Yes, I'll answer all of your questions if you have posted something.
uh, hi guys those who have connected the webinar a little late or don't know anything about the ai 102 learning achievement batch uh, please note that uh, we have shared the complementary learning achievement batch which we have shared already in the chat box the steps has been mentioned and the url also has been mentioned in the chat box so make sure you follow the steps and get your badge redeem. I hope you, you all can see the steps in the chat box. So do follow the steps and get your badge redeem. You can share this badge on your LinkedIn and Twitter profile once it get activated. Also, you can go through the modules and learning path given in it for AI 102. So make sure you follow the steps and get your batch redeem. And if you face any problem while doing it, please put your queries in the chat box. Thank you. Hello everyone. I hope all are back.
let's continue <coughs> Yes, sir. Hope you are able to see the screen. You can see here the training is completed. And you can now go and test. So the trained model you can test by providing an image. So either you can provide the image URL or you can provide an image or you can upload an image so i'm just uploading an image so i'm just going back here and i have some test images so there are a couple of images which are not used in the training so i just use this one and say okay it is analyzing this image and says 71 percentage it is confident that it is a dalmatian right so that means because you have to understand that I have provided only 20 images of Dalmatian. Okay, but still it is confident 71 percentage that it is a Dalmatian. Now let's try with a different uh, image this. Say it's saying 90 percentage it is a bulldog. Right. Or if I say this. It's a, you can see it's a very small image, but still you can see 41 percentage. It's saying it's a Pomeranian and 46 percentage animal, right? So it will detect this. OK, because it has a distant uh, relation with this uh, bulldog look and color. Uh, looks like a bulldog. You can see 11 percentage. It is confused about a uh, bulldog right so you can see that so this is how we do the testing so once we test this model then you can go and publish this so here is an option for publishing so while publishing you need to go and specify the model name and a publishing service name so for uh, prediction endpoint or prediction resource you have to select and then publish okay so now your model is published and it is now ready to consume. So inside your applications, you can specify the prediction resource name, endpoint, and the model name. So iteration one is given as the model name so that you can specify to consume this custom vision model. Now, when it comes to the face API, face API is uh, used for detecting the faces and it's uh, other features. But if you see the computer vision is also providing a face detection option. So what is the difference in computer vision's face service and the face API? So computer vision is also providing a face detection. OK. But it will detect only limited face informations. So that means it will detect the face and it's a position, right? But in the face service, means the dedicated face API, it is not only detecting the face, it can be used for comparing the faces with the, the stored images. And the facial analysis can be done whether the uh, face expression is happy or sad or neutral okay so simply you can say it uh, identifies not only the face position but it also detect the other attributes like emotions then uh, the hairstyles the other uh, attributes that is place or other uh, things like the uh, glasses wear or not or mask is bad or not all these uh, uh, extra things it can detect so uh, it means it is providing an enhanced uh, face detection option compared to computer vision when it comes to face service 
it is doing the face detection, face attribute analysis, landmark location, that is nose, eyes, mouth, then face comparison. Face comparison means if you are uh, providing some face for storage, okay, so it can compare the face with the stored face images so that you can tell, okay, is this image already uh, exist in our database? So you must have seen in Hollywood movies, they are detecting the criminals' faces or they are detecting the uh, uh, person's uh, name and other details by providing an image. So when you supply an image, it will be compared with the stored image details and it will detect the similar faces. Facial recognition is another one, which means when you, uh, this is mostly used in the uh, attendance. You can see in of organizations for uh, attendance, we are now using the biometrics like the uh, fingerprints. But instead of fingerprint, now even cameras can be used, which means whenever you enter the uh, organization premises or enter the uh, door. There is a camera attached in the door which capture your face and then mark the attendance. So because it can detect uh, the person from the face. So facial recognition is used there to detect the person's name or person's information from the face uh, which is captured and then it will mark it is uh, mark as attend. Okay, mark attendance for that person. Persistent face recognition. Whenever you want to store the images of or store the face images, and then you want to do a comparison or you want to do face recognition, then you have to first create a person group. Person group means suppose in an organization there can be hundreds of employees. So you can create a person group for organization level or department level. So organization level if you are creating in our organization we can say synergetics group. Synergetics group means it is a group of employees in synergetics. Okay. So synergetics group is the person group. Okay. Uh, then you will be adding the person inside that person means sonu as a person as an employee and inside my group i can add a multiple faces of mine okay with maybe with uh, specs or without specs okay uh, with beard without beard okay so different uh, uh, images i can upload so it will go and uh, analyze all these images of a single person as you can see in this picture so authorized users group is created and there is a person called a jan and we are uploading multiple images images of jan and multiple images of joe okay and then we will train the face api to understand that these are the faces of jan and these are the faces of joe so later whenever i provide an image of Joe, it will easily detect, okay, this is Joe. Or if I'm providing an image of Jan, it will easily tell, okay, this is Jan. Because in the stored database, they have the images of Jan and Joe. So whenever I provide a uh, testing image, it will compare with the images inside the group and then identify that particular person. The same can be used for finding the similar faces. Suppose if uh, you are giving giving a group photo and a uh, individual photo. So you want to find this face in the group. So for finding the similar faces, you can use what the uh, face API. Another uh, vision related service is form recognizer the form recognizer is primarily used to convert your documents such as uh, pdf documents 
or uh, PDF document means the scanned PDF documents or scanned handwritten documents into the database entries. For example, nowadays uh, in every organization, computerization is going on, which means considering the hospitals, the hospital may be running from last 15, 20 or 100 years. So all the patient's information they stores uh, using hard copies or paper. So all the application uh, uh, form details, the patient's disease informations, all informations are stored in paper. But maintaining the hard copies is difficult. So we have to computerize this. So what we can do one way is to manually enter all the paper informations, all the informations from the paper to uh, an application. So for that, we have to appoint a person. So he will be looking into the paper and then entering these values into the application. So this typically we call as data entry. Okay. So data entry is a time consuming process because we have to look into each and every paper and then manually enter this information into the application. But you can use a form recognizer which can be used to scan the uh, paper documents and then read those informations like uh, from the particular position, the first name, from the other position, last name, from the other position, address, all informations can be uh, retrieved and then store into the database or it can it can be passed into some other application. So it is uh, using some pre-trained models or pre-built models uh, with uh, lots of types of receipts, invoices or business cards. So in US, there are different types of receipts used. Means receipts will have a common standard or common uh, uh, look and feel. Similarly, invoices will have a common look and feel. Business cards will have almost common look and feel. So these are some pre-built models, which means if I'm scanning a receipt, it will automatically detect from the receipt what is the receipt date, uh, company name, or uh, uh, the customer name, or whatever information it has. Okay. Similarly, invoice. So invoice is issued by whom to whom all informations can be uh, extracted automatically. But the problem is if you are providing or if you are providing a receipt which is not in a standard manner, which means in India we are using different uh, types of invoice and receipts which may not be recognized by the form recognizer by default. Such cases you can train the model by providing some uh, custom data means you can explicitly provide the uh, data means scanned documents and you can train the model to detect that uh, type of receipts or invoices okay so you yourself can train the model by labeling those documents that is uh, uh, it can be either supervised or unsupervised means if you are providing them some labeled forms which means while training you will be providing some forms which means receipts or uh, invoices and then you are marking the positions of each and every ent entity or entry like a uh, first name comes in this position last name comes in this position, the uh, entries, items entries comes in this position. So you can mark the informations one by one. Okay, so that is supervised learning. Unsupervised means you are not labeling those forms. It will learn itself. Okay, so the form recognizer is a cognitive service that can be used to read the text informations from receipts, invoices, and business cards into uh, what to say 
records in our databases. As you can see, this is a receipt. Whenever we analyze the receipt, it will be converting the data into this format. Can you see merchant name is for coffee? Transaction date is this one. Transaction time is this one. And items. So what are the different items? It will come here. And the total is 3.75. So this will automatically go and uh, read those information. There is no special training required because this is a standard format of a receipt. Similarly, invoice. So when you say analyze invoice operation, it will be reading this invoice information like this. Similarly, business cards. So it will be able to go and read the business card information like a contact names first name and last name from this business card. Okay, and other information also, the designation, email, phone number, everything it can read. But it is possible for you to provide some custom format and train the model and then use it. So these are some of the vision related services we have discussed that is computer vision then custom vision then face api and finally we have discussed about the form recognizer service now when it comes to language services it provides uh, some of the natural language processing features uh, like uh, text analytics for language detection key phrase extraction, sentiment analysis, named entity recognition, and entity linking. What is language detection? Typically, when you provide a text input, it will be able to detect which language this text contains. So if you are providing Hindi, then it will be able to detect, yes, this input language or input text is in uh, Hindi. But if you are providing something in Spanish, it will be able to understand, okay, this given input text is in Spanish. Okay. So it is detecting the language of the given uh, input text. Second is key phrase extraction. So key phrase means what are the major uh, phrases in that given text for example uh, it may be a city name or it may be an object name or it may be some uh, uh, verbs okay or it may be some of the uh, locations okay so like you can see here example the news new york or uh, empire state building so this is this is some of the key phrases that you can uh, identify sentiment analysis uh, is now most commonly used by the applications to identify the whether the feedback is a positive feedback or a negative feedback for example every application is now giving an option for leaving a feedback okay so whenever the customer for example in hotels after you leave the hotel they will send you an SMS or uh, uh, WhatsApp link. So through the link, you can provide your feedback. So you can put your comment there. So you can put some comments like, uh, I like the stay. Uh, uh, it was very nice, uh, good service, good food. OK, and a lot of uh, uh, spaces in the room. So this is what the comment you are providing. But whether this is a positive comment or negative comment, how you detect that? For that, we can use the sentiment analysis. So sentiment analysis is now most commonly used for analyzing the feedbacks. So, so that it can categorize the feedback. I think in now Flipkart is also providing an option, positive feedbacks and negative feedbacks, two categories it provides. If you go to negative feedback, it shows only the negative feedbacks. If you go to the positive feedback, it shows the positive feedback. How the system is understanding that the given feedback is a positive or negative by doing the sentiment analysis. 
right? Next is uh, named entity recognition. So named entity means there are some pre-built entities like a uh, food or location or building or maybe celebrities. So there are some entities or date and time or uh, location. So all these are some named entities. For example, if I'm saying uh, uh, Chicago. So Chicago is a location. Okay. Or if I'm saying uh, tomorrow, tomorrow five o'clock. So tomorrow is representing a date and time. Okay. So that is representing a date and time entity. Okay. Or if I'm saying I like the uh, garden. So garden is a place. So which represents a place. Or I like a burger. So burger is a food. So food is a entity type. Okay. So like this, there are some predefined entities. So whenever you provide a text, from the text, it will identify what are the different entities. So it will extract the locations, extract the food uh, names, extract the date and time values, and so on. And entity linking will help you to provide the wiki link for that particular entity. For example, if you are giving something like a Venus, uh, let me check whether it is given here somewhere. Okay, no. So for example, if you are providing a text like a, I saw Venus in the sky. Okay, so I saw Venus in the sky means Venus, it can be the planet, or it can be a goddess, right? So I think in Greek or Latin somewhere, the god name is, god or goddess name is also Venus. So to give more details about that entity, from the phrase, from that particular statement, it will identify which Venus it is referring. Like a, I saw Venus in the sky. So from the text, it will understand that it is a Venus planet. Okay, and then it can provide the details about that Venus by providing a wiki link. So it uh, provides a Wikipedia link to give more details as you can see here. Okay, so the language service is capable to analyze all these features. The next uh, uh, language service is the translator service. So translator service, as the name indicates, it is primarily used to detect the language and convert that uh, input language into multiple one or more other languages. For example, if I'm saying uh, hello, how are you in English? It will detect that the given text is English and it you can also provide the output. That means you have to translate to maybe one language or multiple languages. Suppose if I want to convert into uh, Hindi or maybe Spanish or French, whatever it is, you can specify the list of target language names so that it will convert the input text into that language. So there are many languages supported and many languages not supported. To get the details of uh, languages which are supported, you have to refer the documentation of cognitive service because every day this list is keep updating. So I cannot say that today, okay, 60 languages supported or 100 languages supported because tomorrow it may be 105. Day after tomorrow it may be 110. So every day this list can be updated. So I cannot tell you, okay, these are the different languages which are supported. There are many languages supported okay so over uh, 60 plus languages anyway supported okay so it provide options for detecting the language and converting the language into different other target languages and also script transliteration also uh, supported what is that within one language there can be multiple scripts okay so maybe uh, Japanese language, so it can convert into uh, 
the other forms of Japanese, maybe what to say, Latin Japanese or maybe Korean Japanese. So Japanese kind of Japanese kind of language, it can have different scripts. Okay, like in India itself, we have Hindi, Hindi and Sanskrit and uh, uh, Gujarati, all this comes in uh, similar script, right? So it can be converted into different uh, scripts within the same language. Okay, so that is a uh, transliteration uh, process. So it is going to convert the text into different uh, scripts. In language under uh, sorry, in the language service, the third language or third service is language understanding service. The language understanding service, or now simply called a uh, natural language understanding service, which is which is NLU, that is used to interpret the user input and identify the intent of the user. What is mean by intent of the user? See, when you work with the chatbots, you will be providing uh, different kind of inputs. It may be a question or it may be some help you are asking. Okay, so what is the user's input? What he is asking for? How to detect that? For for example, in an e-commerce application, we have a chatbot. Okay, so in the chatbot, the user can enter any kind of question or any kind of help uh, text. For example, suppose he is entering something like, uh, "How I can place the order?" So, how I can place the order, which means the system needs to understand that the user wants to place a uh, order but he don't know how to do that so we need to provide the help how to place the order the step by step instructions need to be provided right but if we are providing can you search uh, maybe uh, uh, photos of uh, dogs for me so what the user is giving the text is not placing an order it is his intention is to search for a product or an item, right? So I want to search for maybe mobiles. So then the system has to understand that the user is asking for a search activity. Okay. Or suppose if you are providing something like, a, okay, I want to cancel my order. How to do that? So I want to cancel my order means it is not an order placing process. It's an order cancellation process. Then the system has to understand that what the user is asking for. The user is asking for cancellation process and then execute the next steps for doing the cancellation. So it may be asking why you are canceling it. Okay, after that, okay, are you sure to cancel? If it is confirming, then you have to give the instructions. Okay, you can go and click this button. And if you cancel, you will get only this much as the refund. All instructions and informations can be given for the cancellation. But it is not same as placing an order, right? So when the user provide a text, which is called a utterance. So when the user provide an utterance, from the utterance, it has to identify what the user is looking for. Maybe he is uh, giving an input text for placing an order or he is giving the text for booking a ticket. So can you book a ticket from uh, Chicago to uh, Delhi tomorrow morning? So it means he wants to book a ticket. That is an activity. So first, it is going to understand what the user is asking for. The user is asking for a ticket booking process. Second, from that information, it will identify from where to where the ticket needs to be booked and on which date. Okay, so in the text it is clearly given there are two entities identified that I want to book a ticket or can you book a ticket from Chicago to New Delhi? Okay, or tomorrow morning. So the locations identified is 
from Chicago. So the from location is Chicago to New Delhi. That means to location. Destination is New Delhi. And the date and time is tomorrow morning. So the system can go and search for the flights that operates uh, tomorrow morning from Chicago to New Delhi. And then it can give a list of answers like, okay, these are the flights operates tomorrow morning from Chicago to New Delhi. You can choose any one of this. Then user can go and click any one of this and continue the booking process, right? But the system is understanding from the given text what the user is asking for, right? If some of the information is missing, then it will continue asking the next question, which is called a follow up prompt. Follow up prompt means, suppose I am giving an input text, something like, uh, I want to book a ticket from uh, Chicago tomorrow morning. Okay. So, but the destination is not mentioned there in the text. I want to book a ticket uh, from Chicago tomorrow morning. So the system will understand, yes, this is a ticket booking activity. And the source location is Chicago. And the date and time is tomorrow morning. But there is something missing for completing the activity. A destination is required. Then only it can do the search, right? So it will ask the next question automatically. Can you provide where or where you want to travel? So when this question comes, then you will provide, okay, I want to travel to New Delhi. So the system is understanding uh, from the text that what is required for completing that process, what is that process, and if there is something is missing, then it will automatically go and ask for that entity, right? So that is mostly used in the chatbots. Right. So natural language processing or natural language understanding service, NLU, or simply language understanding service. Previously, it is called a LUIS, language understanding intelligence service. Okay. LUIS was uh, used to uh, detect the uh, intents from the user utterances and also it will detect the entities. See if you look here some example here so user can provide different utterances for the same intent so for example same activity i can execute in different way can you search for dog images this is for a search activity okay can you show me the pictures of dog this is also indicating search activity or give me some dog images from website this is also a search activity. So I can do the same activity using different text inputs, right? So as you can see here, what time is it? It means we have to execute the get time operation. Means the intent is get time. So means he is asking for the time. Tell me the time. That is also indicating the same activity, right? So or the next one, what is the weather forecast? So it is a direct question. So get weather operation we have to return. That means what is the weather? So do I need an umbrella, which means whether it will uh, rain or not? So what is the weather? Okay. So the weather, get weather activity will understand that, okay, he is asking whether the umbrella is required because what is the weather, whether it will rain or not. So it's a question for understanding about, about the weather. Right. So intent is what the user's intention to do some activity and he will do some activity by providing different utterances. And entities are some specific keywords uh, or objects that is that may exist inside the utterance. For example, what time uh, is it in London? So means in London, what is the current time? So the uh, intention is to know the time, but it also provides a specific location, right? So what is the entity detected? 
the location entity is detected detected and that is value is london okay or what is a weather forecast in paris or for paris so you can say he is asking for weather but for a specific location that is paris okay or you can say something like uh, turn the light on which means it is a turn on activity so we have to turn on a device but which device light so turn the light on or turn the fan on or turn the ac on turn the television on so anything can be turned on but what is the object that is detected so device is an entity type so it can be a light or it can be a fan or it can be anything else okay so there are different types of entities comes machine learned or list or pre-built entities okay so there are different types machine learned means it will learn through the training means you can provide a custom list or custom set of entities list means the term in a defined list you will be providing a, a fixed list of entities pre-built means there are some entities which are already trained like a location time okay or uh, uh, food category all these are some pre-trained uh, entity models the language service capabilities if you see the language features fall into two categories pre-configured features and the learned features the pre-configured features which means we don't need to label or train it is by default providing because the pre-trained models provides these features like a summarization for example if you are providing a very lengthy text it will just identify what it is and give a summary of that maybe in one or two sentence it can give a summary of that named entity recognition as we have saw in the language understanding service uh, it will identify the devices locations or uh, data and time from the given text pii pii means personal identity information like a pin number uh, or passcode or something like that so whenever you provide that input text if there is a personal identity information like a credit card number pin number or maybe mobile number so we have to mask those information so by putting the star 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 so for understanding that whether it is a sensitive information then it uses the personal identity information detection feature so if it is understanding that it is a credit card so it will mask it okay so it will put that star or something in that places right key phrase detection which will identify the common or key phrases in that particular statement sentiment analysis we have already discussed whether it is positive or negative we can detect language detection it will detect what which language it is so these are some pre-configured features but there are some learned features means we train the model to do something that is conversational language understanding which is identifying the intent in the Lewis custom named entity recognition means if you are providing a custom entity like a, uh, maybe person name or something suppose can you call uh, uh, maybe Akhil so Akhil is a name which is custom value so name of the person is given in the text so the activity is calling person so which person that is a name i have given so after getting that name only it can dial that number right i think you can uh, you you may be using a cd or the alexa or something to make the calls right so when you provide a name so it was understanding that that's a name of a person so it is a custom entity custom text classification so it is uh, identifying whether the text uh, is providing some good information or a bad information that is moderating the text and uh, classifying that into different categories question and answering is a q a service which 
generates a set of questions and answers from the documents that you provide. So in the next example, we'll discuss that Q&A service, which is also part of the language service. So for example, in a product manual, so whenever you purchase the television, refrigerator or any device, you will be getting a product manual, which is in a booklet format, right? So the booklet contains a lot of questions and answers. For example, how to uh, change the battery of the TV or how to tune the channel or how to uh, connect uh, external devices. So there are a lot of questions and their answers given in the product manual, how to use that device, right? But nobody is interested to read that because we don't have time to go and read each and every question. So what we usually do, we go to the customer support website. Like uh, suppose if I have purchased a television from uh, Samsung or LG. So I'll go to the LG website and there is a chat assistant will be there. Mm. So in the chat assistant, I'll put the question how to tune the TV or how to tune the channels. So this bot application or this virtual assistant is connecting to a Q&A service which, gen which has a set of questions and answers generated from this product manual. So whenever we upload the product manual PDF, the Q&A service will automatically read the questions and answers and create a key value pair format or key value combination means questions as the key and the values uh, will be the answers. Okay, so whenever mm -hmm. I provide a question in the chatbot, it will go and search that question and answer set, which is called a knowledge base. So it will go and read the knowledge base and find the matching question and then provide a static answer for that. Okay, so that is a, called the Q&A service. Here you can see what it is. The knowledge base of question and answer pairs with a natural language understanding. It's again a language service only, but whenever we want to create a uh, knowledge base, we will be uploading a set of questions. Either manually we can provide the questions or by uploading the uh, documents like a PDF, Excel files, Word document, something you can upload. From that, it will automatically generate the questions and answers. And whenever the user provides a question, it will look into the knowledge base and identifies the matching question and then find a return the answer for that. Okay, so it is a very, very useful service for uh, product supports teams because uh, the chat assistants, the virtual chatbots, will be always using a Q&A service to provide some static answers. So what is the difference between the Q&A service and the language understanding service, which is Louis, is uh, the language, sorry, the Q&A service is always providing some answers for the questions which is asked. So whenever you provide a question, it returns an answer. So it will be a static answer. Okay. So in language understanding service, the user submit an utterance to do some action and expecting an appropriate response or action. For example, if I'm saying, okay, can you switch on the TV? I'm not expecting an answer yes or no. I am expecting an action. So it has to go and turn on the television, right? So it may be a response or it may be an action. For example, if I'm saying, can you search and give me the pictures of dog? So it will search the internet and find out the images of dogs and return to me. So some questions, I will get the response. Some questions, it will do some action. So that is language understanding. In Q&A, service uses natural language understanding to match the question to the answer in the knowledge base. Because in the knowledge base means it is a set of questions and answers. Whenever I provide a question, it may be not in the exact format what they have stored in the database, right? So, for example, uh, previously we have discussed what is the time, uh, what is the current time? That is one standard question. 
So in the database, it may be stored in that format. But I may be asking a question in a different format, like, uh, can you tell me the time? So this means I'm asking the time. So the language service is very intelligent to understand. OK, he is asking for the current uh, date, uh, time. So it is equivalent to which question? What is the time now? So it will go and answer for that, right? So the language understanding or Lewis service uses natural language understanding to interpret the utterance, uh, match it to an intent and identify the entity. So it is reading that intent, which means the user input and identifying which intent it is, that is what action the user want to perform. And also it is detecting the entities from that, like a switch on the television. So television is the device or what is the weather in Paris? So what is the location there, Paris? So it is detecting that entities. Q&A is uh, always providing some kind of static answer because every time when we ask the question, it provides a static answer because it, the answer is coming from a knowledge base. Knowledge base is something like a database. Okay, so from the database, it always gives the same answer every time. But language understanding response indicates the most likely intent and the reference in the entities. So every time the answer may depends on the intent, what the user is providing. So it performs different actions. For example, I'm saying, can you search for the dog images? So it, then it is going to perform dogs image search. But if I'm saying, can you search for the pictures of flowers? Then it is going a different answer. So it is going, going to do a search for the flowers and give the flowers list, right? Client application presents the answer to the user. So the application which you are using is making a query to the backend uh, knowledge base and returns the answer to the user. But in language understanding, the client application is responsible for performing the appropriate action based on the intent. So that means if I'm giving the input like a search for a dog image, then it is the responsibility of the application to do that action, right? Or if I'm saying uh, turn off the television, then it is the responsibility of the application to turn off that television. So these are some of the language services, but if you want to configure this language understanding service or the knowledge basis, then you have to go and use this website. Can you see this is a language understanding website that is called Louis.ai. So this is actually uh, an old website. Okay, now this is migrated into a new website that is language understanding studio or language studio suppose if you want to create a conversational language understanding project then you have to go and create a project for that okay so here you can see understand the questions and conversational language category if you say there is conversational language understanding which is the next generation louis okay so you can go and do this but if you if you want to create a q a maker then you can go for the q a maker service so all the language services are now performed inside of this language studio portal okay so extracting the text information as we have discussed extracting the pii or extracting the key phrases or finding the linked entities named entities all these informations we can try here okay and uh, this is for text classification detect lang uh, detecting the languages and if i want to create a qna maker i have to go and create a project of this type so you can see if i say this i have to go and create a new project first i have to connect to an azure search service so let me check whether I have a search service exist or not. Let me switch my directory. So 
there is no resources found. If you want, we have to go and create a new language service here. We can provide. It's coming from a different. Uh, So we can create a language service here in the Azure portal. Then only we will be able to use that here. It is just deploying the language service. OK, I think it's completed. Now let me go back and refresh. Yes, this one. But again, search service I have to. Yeah, there is one search service exist. taking some time to connect to the resource. OK. So now here we can create the project. Select the language. And then you can provide some basic information like the project name. My QNA. Some description and. What is the default answer you want to provide? Suppose if some question is. Uh, Unable to answer, then we have to provide a default answer. So this is a QA project. As you can see, project is created. And we have to go to add the files or URLs. So suppose if you have a what is a product manual, simply I can say Windows 10. 
product manual PDF is available or not? I'm just okay. User man manual is that available? Or I can say some Q and A. No, it's not providing this. So let me check. So there is some FAQ. I can open. Yeah, I think this has a lot of questions. Let me take this URL and try to use this URL. Let me check whether it is detecting the FAQ from this page. Still going on. This is a PDF. So this I can download into my machine. I think this is still adding. It takes some time. Okay. So here you can see it is added. OK, there is no Q&A detected. I think it is not able to detect. Let's add a file. If there is a PDF added. Yes, from the PDF you can see it extracted these many questions. You know, see where is my file? Where is my application to be saved? What is an application? Etc. Etc. Et so you can add a uh, more questions. Alternate questions can be added if you want. Like a uh, why use folders this is the question. Or okay, so if you want to add some alternate questions, that can be also added. But I'm not doing that. So we have uh, this data sources. And then we have to deploy. I'm just uh, doing it with only that. From the PDF, there is some questions extracted and that I'm using so it is now published so we can create a chatbot directly using this okay or we can use a prediction URL so this is one uh, request I can make to this URL so I just copy this one I can test it with uh, some rest API tool see I'm just going to do a test by using this Thunder client, or you can use Postman for doing a test. I'm, I'm putting this 
url there and uh, from here this is the request so in the request body there is a question format So this is this body. I think it starts from here. We can copy this and put inside this, but we have to make some formatting on this because it contains a lot of. Slash and other informations. So all the parameters are not required here. OK, so. If you want, you can. Specify only the required parameters like a question answer and other things. Let me first put all this here. Should be something like this, but if you don't want to include all these parameters, I think we can cut all these things. Let me put without this additional parameters, let me put a question and answer only. So what is a question we already have? We can check some sample question. The how do I create a new folder? So this question I'm just putting here. How do I create a new folder? A resource not found. Is that authentication? Authentication key need to be provided. Uh, 
ओसीपी एपीएम सब्सक्रिप्शन की दिस इज रिक्वायर्ड एज द हेडर एंड इट्स अ वैल्यू दिस इज द रिसोर्स की व्हिच वी हैव टू स्पेसिफाई द ऑथेंटिकेशन की रिसोर्स नॉट फाउंड इज कमिंग आई डोंट नो व्हाई I think this is what the URL. Okay, I think I'm making a get request. It should be post. Yes. See, now it, uh, we are getting an answer. So this is the post request I made to this URL while making the request. I am. providing the authentication key right this is what the uh, api key i mentioned and this is enough for making the question as you can see this is the question it provides the static answer why use folders and this uh, answer is given it it is generated from this particular source right if you go back and see the source here this is what coming okay folders are the way to organize this information so this is what coming here right so the same question i can ask in a different way okay how to create a folder so it's not exact same but the meaning will be same let's see whether it is understanding and giving the same answer yes it is giving the same answer can you see how do i create a new folder that's the actual question but i am putting in a different way okay or we can put the question in a some other way okay how can i make a folder so again it's giving the same because the intention of that question is same to know how i create a new folder right so the language service is so intelligent to understand from my question so this is my question from that it understand okay this is what he is expecting and it from the knowledge base it is giving the answer right so this is what the knowledge base what is created so a set of questions as we can see so this questions are generated from the pdf right so it can be generated from the url or it can be generated from the uh, files like word excel powerpoint and so on right so this is an example of q and a maker now moving to the next service that is speech service speech service is providing different a set of apis such as speech to text api text to speech api speech translation api speaker recognition api and intent recognition api okay so intent recognition is already integrated with the language understanding service okay so what is this uh, speech to text api speech to text api as the name indicates it is primarily used to Uh, convert the audio into the text format because whenever we provide some audio input using an audio file we can upload an audio file or the direct audio like from my microphone we can directly provide the audio so whenever we provide a audio file or audio uh, stream it will recognize that audio and convert that audio into text okay so it will uh, divide that audio into different uh, tokens and converting that tokens into text so the speech to text api is simply converting that uh, audio into text but it is primarily used for uh, uh, converting the large audio sets but if you have an audio uh, which is less than 60 seconds long then you can use a speech to text short audio api which is faster than the other api because this is going to use a 
minimal uh, model which is able to convert uh, the the audio into text which is uh, lower than or which is shorter than 60 second so the speech to text api is available in dotnet python javascript and other languages similarly we have text -to, to speech also available which is uh, used to convert the text to audio okay so similar to the speech to text the, here also it is providing in two formats text -to, to speech for uh, larger scenarios and uh, text -to, to speech long audio uh, sorry text to speech long audio for the larger text uh, conversions and the text -to, to speech api for smaller text to audio conversions so which help you to convert your text into appropriate audio content the audio formats and voices can be configured so when you convert the text into audio you can specify the uh, audio format that means the audio file type sample rate bit depth means you can configure the audio frequency and other things plus the audio voice for example you want to get this in the male voice or female voice or normal human beings voice or a ai voice means artificial intelligence voice okay so you can specify different parameters while uh, executing the text to speech api so you can specify the audio format as well as the, means the target audio format as well as the voice types whether you want male female voices or you want some uh, human beings voice or the ai based voices so there are some predefined or pre-created voice types available so like as you can see en hyphen gb hyphen george this is great britain english and there's a male voice that is george so like this there are different pre-created uh, voice types available so you can choose uh, the voice type so that the output voice come in that format translating speech to text so it is uh, converting the audio into different uh, languages means on the fly you want to convert the audio into different other languages then you will be able to uh, translate a speech to text to service so this recognizes and transcribes spoken input in speech recognition language and returns the translations for one or more target languages means whenever you provide the audio it uh, uh, immediately convert or translate that into other language format that you specify so these are the common uh, speech services we have that is speech to text text to speech and uh, we ha also have speaker recognition and the speech translation okay so speech translation is mostly used to uh, convert the audio into the text in different languages mostly uh, in the foreign countries when the when people goes there or they comes here they speak in their own native uh, language but the audience may not be able to understand that but immediately on the fly you will be able to go and translate that into their format for example english is a common uh, language which everyone can understand but if a person speaks in hindi immediately that can be converted into english text so that the audience can uh, uh, see what he is uh, or hear what he is uh, speaking so because it is immediately converted into uh, the english so this is applicable in many areas right so nowadays all the foreign uh, ministers coming and going and when they conduct meetings so, so everyone may not be familiar with english so in such cases it will be better to speak in their native language 
and immediately converting that into the uh, common language like English. Our next uh, topic, this is uh, one of the final topic, bot service. We have discussed a lot about the bot services. Bot is a virtual assistant, the conversational AI chatbots, which is primarily used in applications to converse with the user. So the user may, will be interacting with the chatbots, but he will be feeling that he is conversing with a human being because behind the scene, the artificial intelligence is working. And whenever the user asks a question or he is requesting for something, the virtual assistant or a chatbot will be able to understand that and then respond to user accordingly. For example, if he is asking to book a ticket, so can you book a ticket for me? Then the AI assistant or the chatbot will ask the next question from where to where you want to book the ticket. Then you, you will say, okay, I want to book the ticket from this location to this location. The next question will come when you want to book the ticket. So then you can tell the date and time. The next question comes, okay, how many passengers can you tell, give the passenger details? Then you will be telling the passenger details and then it will confirm and start booking your ticket, right? So that means you are actually conversing with an AI application, but you feel that you are talking to a human being. Okay, such an intelligent virtual assistant is chatbot. Okay, so it use the turns to perform or uh, converse with the user. Means every interaction with the chatbot is uh, called activities, and every activity is includes turns. That means when I give a question, the question goes to the chatbot. And the chatbot is doing some action based on that and send a response back. So one conversation is completed there, which is called one turn. Okay, so one turn means the user is making a request to do something and that activity is performed by the chatbot and returns the response back. It's called a turn. Activities are events. So it may be uh, search operation, booking operation, or cancellation, or order placement, anything. Okay, it, it will be some operation. Okay, so this messages means that the text that the user is sending to the chat assistant. So it the messages can be in the form of text, speech, or some images. For example, I can use microphone to give a, uh, audio input. I can instead of typing, I can. I think you must be using uh, Google or Alexa or maybe some kind of. Uh, I think now the AI enabled the Bing service is available. So what you can do is you can simply open uh, and click on this microphone symbol and then talk. It will immediately convert that into text and it will start doing that of that activity, right? So you can provide your message in the form of text speech or maybe some uh, visual interface like a card or image or something like that or it may be a button something like uh, okay do you confirm this click yes or no so there will be yes or no button so you can click on a yes button so that is a visual input you are providing right so for most of the operations there will be a multi-turn conversation multi-turn means if you ask to book a ticket, the AI agent or virtual assistant may ask you some more question for completing that activity, right? For example, for booking the ticket, it will need the first name, uh, sorry, the source, destination, date and time, passenger details, and so on. So it will be conversing with the user until and unless it completes. Uh, completely gets the information, right? So it, it will be using different types of dialogues 
to converse with the user. I mean, it may be a uh, carousel or it may be a card or it may be a list or it may be some kind of buttons. So different types of dialogues can be generated. Dialogue means what kind of a result is coming back to the user. So it may be a card. Card means adaptive card will be there, which contains some images and below some text and buttons. Or it may be simple text output. Or it may be some carousel. We can, you can scroll and uh, see multiple options. For example, show me the images of dogs. So it will show the image of one dog in one screen. And if you scroll to the right side, the right side there will be an arrow. So you can scroll to the right side and see the next images. So that is that kind of carousel. So that is also a kind of dialogue. So different types of dialogues will be generated. And once the bot development is completed, means as a developer, you create the bot application by integrating this cognitive services. Once the bot development is completed, you will be able to deploy this in, uh, or you, are, you'll, you will be able to integrate this with the different channels. Channels in the sense where you are hosting this chatbot. It may be mostly you must have seen this in websites, right? So if you go to the IRCTC website, you, there is a chat assistant called uh, Disha, right? Or if you, see in mobile applications there will be chat assistants you can integrate this with a uh, teams or you can integrate this with a telegram you can integrate this with a uh, facebook okay or you can integrate with a slack so there are different places you can integrate this chatbots so this is called the uh, channels if you are a developer and who who wants to develop a chatbot application. Microsoft Azure is providing a bot service and the bot framework SDK. What is this bot service? A bot service is a cloud service. OK, suppose if you have developed your bot application using the bot framework. Bot framework means it's a downloadable uh, set of libraries using that libraries you can create your bot application once you develop your bot application you need to deploy this in the cloud for deploying this bot application we use a bot service okay so bot service is a cloud service for bot delivery and integration so where you are hosting or deploying your bot application is called a bot service the bot framework service is a component of the bot service that provide REST API for handling the bot activities. Means any request you make uh, to the chatbots, it will be received by the bot framework service and that execute the bot application. And broad bot framework SDK is, as you know, SDK simply means software development kit, which provides the tools and libraries for building the bot applications. As a programmer, you can directly write the code in C Sharp or JavaScript to build a chatbot application. So if you go to the bot documentation, the Azure bot SDK docs. If you go to the bot framework SDK, it will give you the complete set of instructions how to create a bot. Here you can see how to create a bot. Quick start example. So you can see uh, languages like C Sharp and JavaScript can be used, but Java and Python is uh, mostly deprecated. So you can see here the bot framework JavaScript and C Sharp SDKs will continue to be supported. However, the Python and Java are being retired for uh, uh, with a final long term support ending on November 2023. So Java and Python will be retired on 
November 2023 and uh, C sharp and JavaScript will continue. So now even if you see Java and Python here, it will uh, end their support in November 2023. So better to develop your application using C sharp or JavaScript. So if you are a .NET developer, you can use the C sharp as you can see. This is how to build and develop. And here left side, you can see some sample code and how to configure all the configurations are given here. Okay. But if you don't want to write the code and create a chatbot application, no worries. You have the bot framework composer. So Bot Framework Compo Composer is a GUI tool for creating the chatbots. But you need some uh, training to work on this one because it's a graphical bot designer where you can simply drag and drop and place the uh, activities and the flows. So you can see the picture shows the connect arrow connectivity. So first it is going to ask this operation then after that it is going to do this operation and after that is going to the next operation. So and then you can also connect them using arrows. So after this particular activity, it will continue to the next one. So like that it goes. But you that means you don't need to go and write the code uh, in C sharp or JavaScript. The bot framework composer will help you to uh, create the chatbots just simply uh, dragging and dropping the uh, activities into the GUI uh, environment. So this is uh, one of the easiest way to create chatbots. Means if you are not a good programmer uh, like uh, C Sharp or JavaScript, but still you can go and create chatbots by using Bot Framework Composer. The final service or final module is Azure Cognitive Search. We have already discussed about this service. The Cognitive Search is an AI enriched search service used for knowledge mining. So you will be uh, storing your data it, into different data sources. Maybe you are storing your data into relational databases or you are storing them into uh, NoSQL databases like a Cosmos DB or you are storing the data into blob services as unstructured files. But later searching for a particular information in this data source is quite difficult because yes, I want to search for a particular word. I want to go and search the entire data source. It may be files, it may be uh, uh, no SQL database or it may be a relational database anywhere. I am searching for a particular word. If that particular word exists in, a, in one file or record, I want to get that information. But how do that? If you say relational databases, we, we, we may use a query, SQL query, but the problem is SQL query, you have to give it up a specific format using some uh, pattern matching kind of things like, uh, okay, in a particular column, particular pattern you have to search. Okay. And it is difficult to go and search for files inside the file because file content is difficult to search, right? But this AI powered knowledge mining service that is cognitive search can uh, index these documents and data sources and it will be able to go and query inside the content also. OK, which means the indexing process will go and create indexes based on different uh, attributes of that data source. So that may, if it is a relational database, it can use the column names. Uh, if it is no SQL databases, it can use the collection name, attributes of the records, etc. 
right? So based on that information, it creates an index. And whenever we make a search query, it will go and search inside the data source and find the actual result. The different components of cognitive search is uh, one is data source. A data source means it will be the place where the data is stored and where you want to search. For example, you may be storing your files. Maybe you have lots of Word files. These all Word files you can store inside a blob container. Or you may be storing the records into an SQL database. Or you will be storing that documents inside the Cosmos DB. OK. Then second is skill set. Skill set means what are the AI features you want to include while searching? For example, do you want to include the optical character recognition means OCR feature while doing the search? If you do that, it will go and search the images also with the text. OK, so each and every image it will read. And if there is a text, it will use the OCR functionality to read that text. You can use the language detection functionality. Suppose if you are providing the uh, input text in one format, in one language, but inside the documents, the text will be stored in a different language. So the language detection and the translation service it can use to go and search for a particular text. So these are some cognitive services features we are including while doing the search. So skill set defines what are the different uh, cognitive services or cognitive features you want to include while doing the search. Indexer, that is a third thing. Indexer is mapping the data source field and skill set outputs to index fields. So this indexer is doing the index operation inside the data source. So it uses the skill set to index the data source and find the matching results and generate an index out of that. So indexer will be uh, executed uh, only once or periodically. Means if you want while creating the cognitive search, you can specify the indexer to be executed only once or it need to be executed periodically like every one hour or every two hour whatever you like so every one hour or every two hour it will go and re-index the document because the data may be updated for including the new data it will be re-indexing it and the index is the final output which is uh, generated by the indexer so that whenever you make a search query, whenever you make a search query, it is uh, using that index to find the exact result from the documents. So it will be uh, indexer is mapping the data source where the data is placed, okay, and uh, identifies the uh, path. Okay. So it create an index by mapping the uh, fields and the skill set with the data source. OK, so whenever you make a search query, that search query will be executed against an index so that the index will return the data source items. Suppose if you are searching for a particular word, something like Azure, so in which of the files or which of the records contains the word Azure, it uh, returns that. So that's it from my side. In this four hour session, I tried to cover the complete AI modules. So it was a marathon, I can say, because it will be difficult for us to complete all these 12 modules in just four hours. So we have discussed about what is AI. What are the different AI services available on Azure? 
and what are what is cognitive services and different uh, cognitive services types like uh, language services Hello, am I audible? Okay, so I think I'm audible to all of you. Yeah, so uh, we have discussed about the Cognitive services, different types of cognitive services. Then we have uh, discussed about the Azure bot service. And finally, we ended up with the cognitive search. So now if you have questions, you can post your questions. In the. Chat bot uh, in the chat window, I'll try to answer those questions. Okay, here one question has come. Language understanding is better in many aspects. Why even use question and answering service? See, the purpose of Q&A service and the language understanding is totally different. Q&A is used primarily to return some uh, results. It may be uh, text results. So we have to give proper answers to some uh, questions. But language understanding is not providing the text answers. Why it is because uh, it is primarily doing some kind of execution in the background. OK, for example. Language understanding is just to tell you what the user is asking for. OK, it does not go and return any text output. For example, if I'm asking a question like uh, how to switch on the channel or how to switch on the television or how to uh, uh, tune the channels in the television. So this is a simple question that every product customer is asking uh, in a television customer. Is asking, the channel in the television. So the language understanding cannot answer this because language understanding's purpose is to understand what he is asking. So it will just understand. OK, he is asking to uh, asking that uh, how to switch on the TV or how to tune the channels. Then it will connect to some back end service like a, a SQL database or something using the C sharp language, it will execute some program, means user written program, execute in the background, produce some result, and that result will be returned. Means the language understanding is not using a knowledge base. Okay, it is just to understand what the user is asking and hand over this question to some other person. May, may, means it there is a C sharp language program or maybe a Java program or a Python program running behind. It may be a web API or maybe some other web service. So it will hand over this question to that and the answer which is generated by that is returned to the user. So the language understanding is not generating any answers for that. It, it's a purpose is just to understand what he is asking and what are the different entities involved in that 
uh, question. But Q&A is using a database behind the scene. So there is no programming language required separately to answer that. So whenever I ask a question, it itself go and do the searching in the database. That database is called a knowledge base, right? So it's, it's a list of questions and answers. So whenever the user asks a question, it will go and search the knowledge base and give the answer itself. We don't need to do any, we don't need to write any program uh, to go and do a search. That is the benefit of uh, Q&A over the uh, Lewis service, that is language understanding service. Why did Windows 11 FAQ URL did not work? So understand it's not a pure FAQ website. It con also contains a lot of other text information. It's a long paragraph in top and in between there is a FAQ question set. OK, but FAQ question websites uh, which purely contains FAQ questions, this will be able to go and extract information from that. So the one which I have given, I just searched in Internet and whatever simple FAQ available, I just put it there. So it is actually not an FAQ website. The real FAQ website contains only FAQ questions and all. This is some documentation and in between there are some questions. That's why it was, that's the reason I think it is. it was not able to extract the questions and answers. But if you get some real FAQ pages, which contains only FAQ, so you can put that, it uh, works perfectly. What type of algorithms does Azure Cognitive Search use? Sorry, we are not aware about the algorithm, what they are using because uh, it's a purely uh, a service which is developed by Microsoft and you know that Microsoft is not going to expose. It's not an open source uh, product. So definitely it is not exposing what kind of algorithm or model they have used uh, in that. OK, so Ravi has asked a question. C sharp is mandatory. See, uh, Ravi, as part of AI102 certification, since it is a Microsoft certification, they are promoting their language only. So uh, uh, whenever you uh, attend the questions, it's not mandatory that you have to learn the C sharp completely. If you can read the uh, language index, and understand what it is, then it's fine because you are not going to write any single line of code. So they may be giving a uh, one line of code and then will ask you, OK, which will be the argument here? So there will be an argument which is missing there. So you have to go and select an argument from the drop down list. That's it. So the demos and everything labs, everything which is given is uh, in C sharp. So because the labs of AZ AI 102, what they have developed is in C sharp. So I'm not sure because now Python is also uh, becoming very popular for uh, this. Uh, Microsoft may be providing labs for Python also, but as of now, uh, all the labs of AI 102 is in C sharp. In exam, there will be no uh, C sharp questions which you have to write. Okay, there may be one line of uh, C sharp which you have to just uh, drag and drop or maybe select from the drop down. That's it. So it's not mandatory that you have to go and learn the C sharp. If you know Python, I think you will be able to easily crack this because every program will have syntactically, even though they are different, the meaning of that statement remains same. Okay, Partha Sai, example of cognitive search. See, cognitive search, if we have to demonstrate, the problem is we have to create a data source with a large set of data, and then we have to create an indexer 
means indexing process will take some time because it may take like uh, we have trained the custom vision model. It took, I think, 10, 15 minutes to train the model. So it will take some time to extract that uh, data source and then create the index. So it will take some time uh, and it is also a chargeable service. That's the reason uh, we are not giving the demo of primitives. But if you are uh, taking the AI 102 certification, there will be a lab or demo uh, available for cognitive search. Questions. Sri Srikanth, does any service provide embedding? No, there is uh, nothing like your OpenAI embeddings is not directly available, but OpenAI is now available in Azure also. It's called Azure OpenAI. So the OpenAI models, what you are using is now available in the Azure platform also. It's called Azure OpenAI. How much will it cost to do this certification? So you can talk to Chaita 